So, I'm currently working on a project called Time and Tide, and it features images that have glowing pink foliage. And this project's been on my website for a while, but after sharing some shots on Instagram, quite a few people have asked me how I achieve the effect of the glowing foliage. So, I decided to just make a video explaining it. So, the project is inspired by our changing perception of nature as we start to see the tangible impacts of climate change. And I've used foliage to symbolise nature's resilience and its omnipresence. Um, because foliage is so ubiquitous that it often goes unnoticed. And it's constantly reasserting its dominion over us by slowly penetrating through concrete and steel and reclaiming all human-made structures. So I wanted to challenge our perception of foliage. Um, so I used infrared photography to make it stand out with a kind of alien post-apocalyptic feel. I've used this old Canon 1300D that I've picked up on eBay. It's had its hot mirror removed and replaced with a 590 nanometer filter, um, which means that it captures some visible and some infrared light, and the infrared light reflects strongly off the foliage. But this glow also involves significant post-production to achieve. So let me show you some of the editing process that I'm using. So one of the problems with Lightroom is that it's calibrated for light on the visible spectrum and not for ultraviolet or infrared. So when you're dealing with infrared imagery, you have to do a few workarounds. So I've opened this raw file in Lightroom. It's very red. It needs to be bluer, but the white balance is capped out because Lightroom caps its white balance at 2000 Kelvin. I can only go redder, I can't go any bluer. So I've actually made a camera profile that takes the white balance past that, but I'm not gonna go into how to make that or anything like that, it's a bit complicated. So I'm gonna show you an easier way, and what we're gonna do is work with it as a pixel-based image in Photoshop. So I'm gonna hit Command-E or Control-E if you're on Windows to go into Photoshop. Then once we're in Photoshop, I'm gonna to go to the Camera Raw filter. So in here, we can now pick the white balance eyedropper and select something neutral. I like to select the stone and then we get a bit of a better white balance. So I'm just gonna do a quick bit of tweaking just to get the contrast a bit better and it's slightly wonky. So I'm just gonna to go to my geometry and straighten it up a bit. So that looks good to me. So the problem we have now is that we have blue foliage, but we want it to be red. And so we need to switch the information from the red channel to the blue channel and the blue channel to the red channel. So we're gonna do that by adding a channel mixer adjustment layer. And in the channel mixer, we have red, blue, and green, and the red has 100% red, the green has 100% green, and the blue has 100% blue. That's the default, obviously. But with the red, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the 100% out and put that information from the red channel into the blue channel. So now we're getting some interesting stuff happening here. And then we're going to do the opposite with the blue channel, where we take the blue information down to zero and we put that blue information into the red channel. So now we are starting to see the basics of where we want to go with this. So I'll save this and then we'll go back to Lightroom and we can see that it has updated here. And the reason we've come back to Lightroom is because we want to use the calibration. So I'm going to start by pulling the saturation of the red up to 100%, the saturation of the blue up to 100%, and the greens can come up a bit, not quite as much, maybe somewhere around there, around 40, 50%. Then we want to tweak these values a bit until we get the color we want. So I'm going to pull that down there. I'm going to maybe push this up a little bit, somewhere around there, and then the blue will probably come down a little bit to somewhere around there. The way I'm doing this is rather than selecting the reds and then pulling those values up, is that I'm creating a very oversaturated image and then selecting the colors that I don't want to be saturated and pulling those values down instead. So the next thing I'm going to do is go to my color mixer 
this blue is a bit too green here so i'm just going to change the hue to make it more blue and then i'm going to bring the saturation of this right down so it's almost black and white it's just very very pale sky is a little bit yellow for me so i'm going to go to my mask select the sky and just pull the saturation of that down so we're getting very close now but there's more i want to do to this foliage so i'm going to add a color mask so i'm going to create a new mask and color range and i'm going to start selecting this but as this highlights it in red and this is red it's a bit difficult to see so if i click this ellipsis i'm going to go image on black and white there we can see a little bit better with a color mask you get five points of reference so that's our first one i'm going to shift click down here shift click over here shift click this bright bit and maybe shift click over here and here we can see we can refine this mask we can put it up and down a bit and that this weird mask look where it's black and white in color that will disappear as soon as we start to tweak the sliders so i'm going to go to my texture and i want it to look very fluffy and soft so i'm going to pull my texture right down and i'm going to pull the clarity down a little bit not all the way but maybe around there but I'm going to push the dehaze up a bit because that just gives it a little bit more contrast. I can also push my saturation up a little bit. What I want to do is really, really push this as far as it will go before the image kind of breaks. You can also tweak the color a little bit with the here saturation. I think that's kind of good. And that's basically it for the process. I might do a little bit more tweaking, but that's kind of it. Um, how I'm going to print these is a completely different question as this pinky red is is way outside of the CMYK color space. So I might have to look into whether it's possible to use a fluorescent ink channel in the mix or something. I'm going to have to find if it's even possible to print these. And in terms of the look, a lot of it is down to shooting in the right conditions. For the atmosphere I'm going for, I need a slightly misty or rainy or overcast day and what this does is it allows the architecture the walls roads buildings etc to look quite dark in comparison to the infrared light that's bouncing off the foliage i want them to look slightly post-apocalyptic so there needs to be no people and the foliage needs to be overgrowing a bit and the buildings need to either be run down industrial looking places or railway lines or rivers seem to work well I'm not quite sure why some things work and why other things don't, but the, almost the best one I found is abandoned, ornate looking buildings. I think there's something about that idea of having a perceived level of value that's just been left to ruin, where nature is reclaiming it. It, it has the right feel for me. So you do really need an infrared camera for this sort of thing. I found 590 nanometer to be kind of the right area to get that kind of glowing foliage. So hopefully this tutorial has explained a little bit how I was doing that for anyone who wanted to know. I'll see you next time.